Hey, yo, what's up, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Action Jackson, man. And today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my reaction of the Kansas City Chiefs beating the uh, Cincinnati Bengals to go to the uh, Super Bowl against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, man. So, hopping straight into it. I appreciate if you guys would like the video. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Comment and share my video with anyone who you think might enjoy my content, man. So, this was just another classic game by the uh, Kansas City Chiefs and the Cincinnati Bengals. It's always been a good game between these two every single time they play. Ever since they first met up in 2021 in uh, Week 16, that's always been a really good matchup. That's when the Chiefs, uh, so that's, that's when the Bengals cemented themselves into a true contender into this league ever since that game. Then they met up last year and they played each other in the AFC Championship. Same place in Arrowhead and the Chiefs took care of business, uh, you know, well, the Chiefs had a big lead on them in the AFC Championship game. And then Joe Burrow was just on a magical run that season. Went in and won the game. You know, then they lost in the Super Bowl. Then they met again in the regular season. Uh, I believe like week 13 in Cincinnati. Cincinnati won. And then I said right then and there, that was your preview matchup. If you go look back on it, I believe it was NFL. I think it was week 14. Uh, I said what you saw right then and there that Chiefs and um, Bengals that Bengals game that was your preview matchup of, a of the AFC Championship, and sure enough, came to fruition that uh, they met up again and they're playing each other right now. It was a really really good game. Um, one thing I do want to address is Joseph Asai, man. Um, I'm not mad at him. Um, that's a second year player, first off. And you can't really get too mad at him for making that play. He didn't want to, He didn't want Mahomes to get more yards. Yes, in hindsight, he does look stupid for pushing the quarterback out of bounds, especially knowing that as a quarterback-driven league and you can't breathe or touch on these quarterbacks. So that's the only negative. But he should keep his head up, man. He played well throughout this entire game. They kept saying his name in the uh, broadcasting booth. So he has so he has a bright future with the uh, Cincinnati Bengals. But, yeah, that, that's first off. I'm going to give a shout-out to the uh, – Cincinnati Bengals, man, they play their tail off the entire season. Uh, they've been doubted. Uh, they always got the wrong end of the stick, especially with that DeMar Hamlin situation. Um, you know, a lot of people, that was just a horrible situation just for DeMar and how, you know, what he was going through and then what T. Higgins went through. And then that they just, can that game, you push aside the fact of what happened with DeMar, that that game was going to be for essentially – uh, for the number one seed and that, um, you know, the Bengals didn't have no say, honestly, whether or not they could have went to the uh, playoffs, uh, you know, and potentially have, potentially have the number one seed. That was stripped away from them. The only person who had rights for that was the Chiefs and the Bills. And they had to, then they had to go play the Ravens uh, the week after in week 18 after being shaken up the week before. Then they had to go see them the week after that. And then, you know, they beat them, the wild card, then the divisional. They went out there, took care of business against the Bengals. I mean, against the Bills, like I thought they would normally would on that Monday night, especially with that drive they was having. Because they scored, because before that DeMar Hamlin situation happened, it was 7-3, to three, and the Bengals were looking sharp that day as well. Uh, there, was a, there was some bad calls that happened in this game. A lot of things, they'll be like third and forever. It'll be like third and 13, and then they'll be called, and then they'll call like a holding call or... You know, whatever call it, legal contact. They'll do something like that in this game. But what people got to realize is that the Chiefs are now the new Patriots in terms of that they're going to get all the, they're going to get all the calls. They're going to get all the love. Um, I still respect the heck out of both quarterbacks, Mahomes and Burrow. I both label them as the two best quarterbacks in the league. And then it's everyone else is just really, really good. So just to go over stats, uh, number 15 did his thing today, man. 29 to 43, 326 yards with two touchdowns. Isaiah Pacheco. Um, he didn't, the Chiefs, they didn't do anything really in the run game. They only ran for a total of 42 yards, but Isaiah Pacheco really balled out in this game, uh, specifically from a receiving standpoint. He had 10 carries for 26 yards. Patrick Mahomes had three of eight. McCall Hardman had two of seven. Uh, Jerry McKenna had, was four of one. And Ronald Jones was a carry for zero yards. Amar, um, uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, uh, had six receptions for 116 yards. Travis Kelsey, big Trav, was uh, 7 of 78. He's going to play his brother in the Super Bowl. Uh, I believe this will be the first time that ever that brothers 
that are both going to be um, on the field, not at the same time, but both offensively, uh, two brothers are going to be, you know, on the same side of the ball. And not only that, but playing in the same big stage of the Super Bowl. So Isaiah Pacheco was five receptions for 59 yards. Jeremy Kennedy was two of 17. Sky Moore, um, it's not going to show in the stat box, but he had a really nice punt return uh, towards the end of the game that gave the uh, Chiefs tremendous uh, field possession. Uh, yeah, Marcus Kemp for a catch with 13 yards. Amika Hardman was 2 of 10. Kadarius Tony was 1 of 9. Juju was 1 of 7. And Noah Gray was 1 of 4. The uh, Kansas State defense really balled out in this game. Specifically, uh, Brian Cook had a really nice PBU that turned out to be an interception. Then you had Justin Reed, who did really nice today in coverage. You had George Kolofsky getting pressures. And he had a sack today. Then you had Frank Clark, who had a sack and a half today. Willie Gay Jr. had a half a sack. And then you also had... What's that man? Uh, Chris Jones, who had two sacks today, who was a big uh, difference maker today, like he normally is every game. He is that dude in the interior. He's just, that's a bona fide stud right there, man. I really love watching Chris Jones and him play. So um, just talking about it from a Chiefs standpoint, moving forward, uh, they struggle. They struggle against running quarterbacks. Um, not saying Joe Burrow is, but any single time that the Chiefs are dropping back seven or eight, they never account for the quarterback. And the first time they played in the regular season in the NFL, Week 14, uh, Joe Burrow, if I can go double check real quick. So it was Week 13 that when they played. And Joe Burrow ran for 11. He ran 11 times for 46 yards. That might not look like a lot, but he averaged 4.2 yards on the ground. And he, he did score a touchdown. There's a couple of times in this game also where they ran some quarterback. Um, they, they ran a quarterback draw. With uh, Burrow, uh, that didn't go for much. But I'm telling you, if you give them the same rushing lanes that you did for Burrow, but you give them the Jalen Hurts two weeks from now in the Super Bowl, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to be in major trouble. That's the only thing I feel like they have to work on. And also, they have to be sharp, more sharp today than what they already were. But they have to be, they have to sustain more drives. Uh, they have to get more of their playmakers involved. Obviously, yes. Um, Travis Kelsey has to be a big focus in uh in the Super Bowl. Just get the hands in the ball, the playmakers. I don't even have to talk about that with any of these teams that played in the game today's, you know, the Bull Championships. I don't have to talk about them getting the ball into the hands of their playmakers. They already know what to do with that. And uh let me give the Bengals some love. Like I said, I already gave him love at the beginning of the video. Uh shout out to Joseph Asha um, Asai. I know that he had a horrible ending and he had his head down, but if I'm Joseph Asai, I put my head up, man. Uh, you played a really, really solid season, and there's no reason for you to keep your head down like that. I understand that was a play that essentially cost your team the game. But keep your head up, man. You guys were already fighting an uphill battle. Your offensive line was already in shreds. That's the reason why they were on you guys the way they were. Uh, not only does Kansas City already have a really nice pass for a set, but uh, it made it even easier for them because your offensive line was in shambles. Lel Collins scored ACL against the Patriots. Jonah Williams dislocated his kneecap, I believe, in the wild card round. Uh, Alex Kappa, uh, injury as well. So that offensive line that looked crappy at the beginning got better towards the middle and the end of the season, got really better at the end of the season. And then as soon as it seemed like things were clicking for them offensively on the offensive line, uh, it went down with Lel Collins. Then it was everybody else that got injured. And they had like, they have a stat out there, us and Dallas Cowboys, you know, my bad. The Bengals and Dallas Cowboys have one of the most rotations in terms of offensive line makeshifts this year. So that's fine. Uh, Bengals, uh, I don't really know what they're going to really do in the offseason. For me, if I'm them, I you obviously want to get better offensive line help. But that's, that's something I really focus on with them. You might want to get you a, a real corner. I know you have Ch uh, Jadobe Awuzie coming back, so that's obviously going to be a plus. Um, what are you going to do with Jesse Bates? Are you going to try to extend him? But also, they have a lot of big contracts that they have to give. Joe Burrow is going to want at least fifty-five, sixty million. He might reset the market. He's definitely a quarterback that's going to want a lot of money. Jamar Chase is going to be right after him, getting him his big money as well. So they also got to pay T. Higgins as well. So the Bengals, they got, they're going to be in salary. Um, they, they're going to figure it out. But I feel like they're probably, they might have some troubles with the salary cap just because you got to pay Joe Burrow a lot of money. You got to pay 
T. Higgins, some solid money. You also got to pay that all, you know, figure out what you want to do with the offensive line. What are you going to do with Jesse Bates? Uh, are you going to have Jackson Hill just, reta- um, you know, replace him? I don't know. I don't know what the Bengals are going to do from that standpoint. I already saw what the Chiefs seem to do in the Super Bowl. Um, be more consistent on offense. Defense need to get better at stopping running lanes for the quarterback. But they'll have two weeks to prepare for both each other. Should be a really, really good game next week, uh, you know, two weeks from now in the Super Bowl. So, yeah, man, that's about it. Hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Bye.